Okay, so um, I'm going to present this, uh, this piece that we, uh, we are working with two colleagues from Latin America and from Mexico. And uh, these other two colleagues are from Peru. And we started a research uh, project on these other actors in the ecosystem of solar communications in Latin America. And actually, I think it is wonderful the presentation Catherine. So it's, it's kind of an introduction of this topic on the new actors, or at least we call it like this in Latin America, new actors, new people, uh, new initiatives that are you know, playing a role in the ecosystem in, uh, in solar communications. Okay, so um, as I said, we are three people, two other colleagues, uh, two librarians from, from Peru, and myself. We started this uh, project with the idea of I remember we were in Peru, we were in Lima, and we were uh, talking about prices of services for the installation and customization of OJS and other services, and we started to, to realize that there are more than more companies and services, outsourcing services that we thought. So we started to uh, analyze this data, and uh, this mini project uh, has the aim or the purpose to identify these, these the characteristics of these outsourcing services uh, that are proliferating in Latin America. We used the data from uh, the, the, web, the, the websites of these companies and also uh, the, a, a couple of lists that we have you know, that uh, Cielo and Redoli, these two uh, initiatives in Latin America have uh, in terms of companies that provide services especially for marking up. So we use that data also and we focus on seven countries Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Peru. Uh, because uh, these are the biggest countries in terms of their production and in terms of also the services that are uh, there uh, proliferating, as I said. Um, oh, sorry, this is in Spanish. So, resultados. <laughs> um, the results well, show that um, we identified uh, I will show you these services, but mainly the services that these companies provide are related to OJS. In one way or another, they are providing services in many different stages or phases of the, you know, the usage of OJS. Uh, and this is partly because uh, there's, there's still a lack of professionalization in, in Latin America and there, there's a need of internationalization of journals, and uh, of course, uh, there are the, the, the funding from for the journals in Latin America, as you may, you may know, provide uh, come from mainly public institutions and government directly or indirectly. So we focused in first. We saw that these companies also provide in services for other publications, for example, or for other yeah, um, initiatives like repositories. But we focused only in journals because we wanted to, to, uh, to see what exactly editors and you know, publishers are looking for uh, when, they, when, when they use these services. So first, uh, we wanted to uh, clarify maybe you know this, but um, that we have these terms that are not, uh, we cannot use these terms in English or in Spanish and in Portuguese in, in the case of Latin America as like synonyms. And especially because for us in Latin America, as you know, the journals are mainly driven by universities. And many of them, most of them, are public universities. So the university is the editor, or the people that run the journal and the management team, 
are faculty or professors inside the universities. Also, uh, the publisher, which is called the, pub the publisher in English, is also people from, from the, or the university itself. Uh, maybe the third actor, the printer, is the only one that is not necessarily inside the, the, the university, but the rest of, the, of, of these actors uh, are part of an institution. So this, um, this means that the problems the journals have are problems or are issues of the educational system, mainly, in, in our countries. So, this ecosystem, um, sorry, sorry, it's an English word. Um, this ecosystem, as you know, uh, it's made of all these people that work in the, in the institutions or around them, and they are connected for, in terms of the journals publishing, they are interconnected and they are dependent very strongly, actually, because I, as I said, um, all the staff in a journal uh, belongs to, to a university. So, but we have, and we identified these other actors, the, the service providers. And these other actors, and we initially thought it was, uh, we, we were talking about companies, private companies, but we realized that they are not only private companies, and of course, when, when, think, when we think about private companies that provide services to the journals, we think about the Elsevier, this B5, blah, blah. But we, in Latin America, we have other companies, small companies. Uh, and we identified also the concept of editorial uh, uh, services that are not the, the, the publishing services, but because here, I will show you uh, an image, but the editorial services are provided in all the stages of the publication process. Uh, for example, in the submission process, in you know, reviewing, blah, blah. So in every single stage, they are, they, they, the companies we identify provide services. So, uh, and of course, it has to be with the electronic um, journals and the uh, environment in, in the digital environment. So, uh, and also publishing services and editorial services, uh, which are different, uh, these companies uh, provide all of them, and, or may, maybe just one in one stage, or maybe in all the stages of the editorial process. Uh, this is, of course, a the standard editorial process that you, of course, know very well. And uh, we identified there are many uh, different companies or people, persons, like uh, professionals that provide services, for example, to uh, uh, you know run the social media of the journals or to help them with the customization of OJS or with translation, etc. So we have now this panorama of services in Latin America. And the thing is that, again, since the fundings are provided by the, by the state directly or indirectly, this um, starts to be an issue of the public uh, good, right? So what we think is that, and, and again, I, I, I want to quote Catherine, it's necessary to, uh, to ask for these services for transparency, I think, because this is uh, the money of universities. The main services we identified are these, marking up in different systems, uh, like the Cielo system, Redalic, Amelica, Ilat, and others. Uh, and this is uh, at article level. Uh, we identified also open journal system services in, in different stages. The DOIs or the identifiers, like mostly DOIs, and metrics and layout or content editing. Some of these services are, for example, uh, companies um, ask for the payment in credit card, for example. And this is hard for the universities, and we identified some of the ca some, uh, some cases 
when it is very hard to do that. So, because universities can pay by credit card to anyone, so they hire a third party to do this DOI process. So again, it, it started to complicate this ecosystem to be more complex and to have other actors that are playing their um, specific roles. Well, this is a case of Cielo um, that has a list of uh, some companies that are certif certified by Cielo to provide services uh, under their markup system. Also, Redalink has another list of, but it's not publicly available. This uh, this list of companies here, are some of them, uh, are uh, were published in the Cielo website, and then you can you know uh, go to the website and we what we did was to identify the prices and other aspects specifically in terms of each services they provide. Uh, we have a, a database of these uh, companies and these people because we, as I said, we identify also persons providing these services and the types of companies we identified are here, like uh, the, the nature of the type of the companies, like Ulrika, which is mean like a, a, a company that is registered in this country to, to, uh, in order to receive money and you know, pay taxes. And natural is people or persons, individuals. So in terms of the countries, we found 21 companies or people in Brazil, and these are the other numbers. Um, and uh, the, yeah, some of these companies provide services internationally, so they are based in Colombia, for example, but they provide services for other countries in Latin America, mainly. And these are the services. Uh, the main services they provide are, are related with OJS, uh, mark, marking up, translation, metrics, design, etc. So I want to highlight what Catherine said also that the problem. It, we don't know, we don't still know if there's a problem, but uh, she's <laughs> uh, But the thing is that it's not black and white or why commercial or non-commercial, but we are, I think we are starting to see some monopolization of services from some companies and also we are uh, seeing how these non-academic actors are playing important roles in decision making in terms of the editorial policies and the national policies. We have we are going to present another um, paper in another panel with, where we are talking about how national policies are now taking these um, um, inputs from the uh, commercial companies to design, uh, yeah, national uh, to take decisions in, in a national level. <clears throat> well, in terms of the phases or the stages of the editorial processes with when these companies provide services. We have the management mainly, and it, it, it includes, you know, the installation of ODS, etc., customization, and editing, and uh, you know, uh, publication. So uh, what we saw was that this phenomenon. Uh, it's based on two main needs in regions or in countries like ours. First of all, lack of staff, because many of the journals that we publish in Latin America have two or three people, like at maximum, that runs the, the, the journal. And so there's a lack of people uh, to do the job. And also lack of knowledge, of technical knowledge or skills. So they have to go and hire these other companies because they, they cannot uh, do it by themselves, they don't have resources. And so this is a perfect like open market to, a, to other actors, the private actors, that again I'm not saying that this is bad or good, but I'm saying that this is a new perspective or a new phenomenon that we should um, uh, look very carefully because 
And we see now in Latin America many countries that are suffering the open market and the you know neoliberal uh, economy. Chile is one of them, and the, I think we, we should uh, take care of this uh, problem, and we should we should uh, as Papa uh, mentioned this morning, uh, OJS or TKP. Uh, are very close to the community, and I think these other actors are part of the community. And other and the, and the universities, which are the, the publishers, should also provide or should have this feedback with PKP or with uh, the main providers in order to have like more transparent uh, contracts and more uh, transparent services, because also we. Uh, see in Latin America that is, uh, I, I know a couple of cases of corruption and conflict of interest. So I think this is a perfect moment to uh, be careful and uh, 